This is Peter. He's perhaps the most creative person I know in Australia. He's an award-winning designer, an entrepreneur, a bit of a computer nerd. That's who you come out. Like, you are uh, now a Jedi Knight. <laughs> I'm a Jedi. An NFT guru, and someone who's been successfully able to merge his love for Islam and design into one. So much so, he's giving talks to the folks at Apple about Islam, and they don't even know. Fresh out of Sydney, he's close enough for me to find out how on earth a guy called Peter became a Muslim and went on to becoming one of the biggest names in the Muslim world for Islamic-inspired design. Let's find out. This is an incredible convert story. Speaking of, did you know that converts are eligible for zakat even if they aren't financially in need? National Zakat Foundation in Australia plays a crucial role in helping converts in the local community find their footing. In fact, they've helped hundreds of converts right across Australia and you can too by paying your zakat to National Zakat Foundation. Support your local convert community by supporting NZF. Let's get back to the video. So we're here at Peter Gould's actual studio in perhaps the heart of Brighton, a beautiful beachside suburb. Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful. Let's check it out. Let's go, Charles, bro. Charles right. around. Come on in, come on in. All right. I'm it's gonna... not Google Studio, but Gould Studio. <laughs> Close enough. As a kid, Peter was the go-to computer nerd at school, the kind of guy to teach his teachers how to use a computer. You see, while the technology was new to all those around him, it was all too familiar to Peter, given his dad just so happened to be a computer teacher. This gave him exclusive access to the latest tech and of course, this thing, Photoshop. I did my first design, my paid design project. I think it was, I think 11th grade um, mm -hmm. and it was for a classmate. And yeah. uh, you know, he was looking for a poster for this little event he wanted to run. So I, I designed the poster. He goes, how much? I said, oh, I don't know, $20. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so much better than working at awesome. McDonald's. <laughs> Realizing his potential, Peter began establishing himself as an up and coming designer. But just as he began immersing himself in the world of design, a new world was to take him by surprise. In my teenage years, growing up here in you know, Australia or in sort of suburban Sydney, most of my sort of understanding of, of God and religion and faith and Christianity, for example, came from like The Simpsons. Now that's religion. But whereas God's this kind of angry old, usually white man with the big beard, you know, you see those paintings, you see certain images. And I uh, didn't really take the time to have an informed opinion. I just sort of went along with, you know, what seemed the circles that I were in at the time. So with a general aversion and skepticism towards religion and religious folk, Peter carried along his way until this happened. And during that time, actually, I came to know a Muslim family that lived nearby me. They were intelligent, successful, they were professionals, they, you know, they seemed to have a really healthy, you know, approach to life. But they were practicing Islam and they were praying, they were uh, fasting. And these things uh, it challenged me because I was, you know, I thought, hang on, like no one really cares about that stuff. We may do it culturally, but you know, it's all very old hat and it doesn't really belong in the modern world. What, why, you know, why would you care? Like, why would you believe in God? <laughs> like, it's just like, every, you go, everything's all right here. This small neighborhood encounter challenged everything he had long believed and the thought wouldn't leave him. I became curious about some of the practices of this family. I sort of went into this unexpected and unplanned one or two year period of exploration, discovery kind of mode, I guess. And uh, for example, the idea of visiting mosques seemed, you know, like pretty an alien thing to do, but I did go and I went to a couple of different ones and actually started just being curious about, you know, meeting different people on this kind of path. And the people that I'm meeting just had this calmness, this stillness, this inner sort of tranquility. And I felt increasingly my heart inclined towards that is, that's a beautiful thing. It was an indescribable feeling that would lead him to take one of the biggest decisions of his life. What was coming to, it's a journey of both the head where you feel that, yes, look, even rationally, you have to agree there is some cohesive design in the universe. There is something that is beyond this, this physical experience we have. 
and in your heart this growing sense of you know I just I love this this feeling there's something here you feel this kind of there's a beauty in this spiritual path and then these two things come together for me in Ramadan and it was actually the 27th night of Ramadan that I said my shahada and became Muslim and it happened to be that I officially witnessed that here and where we're doing the interview on this uh, this right in this spot Mm. How were your feelings after you said the shahada, after you entered Islam, <sighs> on that night, in yeah. this place? SubhanAllah. Well, there was a light rain, I remember it, and I feel that uh, it was just the start of this incredible journey of immense na'mah, of blessings. And in the 20-something years since, like it's just been just the most wonderful thing. It was the start of something special that one can only experience to truly understand. But back in the design world, he was soon to face off with his first set of Muslim challenges. So was, early on, I was designing for some pretty uh, well-known design agencies in the world, like uh, you know Ogilvy and some you know Versace type companies. It was doing, was doing well. Things were, you know, I was getting more and more projects. Um, and then it was like, great, okay, this this kid is all right. Uh, we've got a great project for you it's for this new champagne brand. You know, can champagne. You, yeah, okay. <laughs> that is you know our whole brand. And, and they were like, okay, you can help design the whole experience. And I was like, oh, I don't think I can, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I, I didn't take that on. And they're like, oh, okay, what's up with this guy? All right, so let me know. And then another one came from the same agency. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, this is for um, Lotto, which is like this big oh, gambling. Gam and gambling thing. They're giving you everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, guys, I'm, I'm actually, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do this, mm -hmm. this one either. And they're like, okay, okay. Khalas, that was it. After that, they're like, who's this guy I think he is? It was as though his new faith signaled the downfall of his once promising career. And given the timing of his conversion, things were only going to get harder. It was a tough few years, definitely. And this was around the 2000, 2001, 2002. And Islam suddenly was in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, um, sadly. So what became difficult was if you're in a context and you say, oh yeah, I'm a Muslim, I've, I've become Muslim you're gonna get looked at strangely <laughs> really I just I didn't really want to tell anyone even in my my projects and my kind of client design work as well I kind of kept that from from most people as long as I could just because yeah you kind of invited the opposite reactions stuck at the crossroads he decided to make the bold decision to step away turning his back on his little studio and packing his bags to embark on a journey to truly understand the reality of his new religion and what it meant to the world of design. He's allowed us to come to his home to unveil some of his personal and most prized possessions from his travels. Come with me. Through the course of his travels, he was able to uncover a completely new dimension to design. My sort of plan was really save up as much as I can from my yes. design freelancing and fly, you know. So I was able to explore and yes, yeah, some of these shelves have, you know, lots of little pieces and mementos. Um, but there was this old, uh, very old tile maker in, um, in Fez who gifted me this tile. And this says, um, I think, Allahu Akbar, in that kind of expressive Maghrebi style. His travels exposed him to a new world and allowed him to collect some incredible treasures along the way. Like this vinyl right here, fresh out of the 70s. Alhamdulillah, this is a vinyl from 1971, I believe. Wow. And it's uh, Abdul Basid, the famous Qari of Quran. The voice from heaven. I, was, I literally was going to say the voice from heaven. And yeah. it, it's written the voice from heaven. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Okay, sure, you want to listen to it? I, I, I really you am can, looking forward you to can actually hear it. I've never heard like... But perhaps the biggest treasure of all was this prized possession he picked up from Damascus, Syria. A 200-year-old handwritten Qur'an. 200-year-old Qur'an. At least we think, maybe it's more, but alhamdulillah. But you you can feel its its age, you know. Uh, you can feel its age, and I'm scared you, to touch it. No, you got to touch it. Alhamdulillah. So, is there a name, a, a family name, or the person who wrote this, transcribed this Quran? We do. We have at the end, actually, in the year twelve sixty nine Hijri. Yeah. It's almost two hundred years Around, ago. Yes. Yeah. 
but there's no name. It really goes to show you the sincerity of the individual who transcribed this Qur'an yeah. and the fact that perhaps he only wanted the ajr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was pointing to Allah, he was never pointing to himself. These weren't just memorable artifacts he was collecting, but pieces that carried profound lessons that would go on to shape his design career. But was it really enough to turn into a career? To marry the two worlds of design and faith into one? Or did he really have to leave his faith behind? This is where Peter met Peter. Yes, another one. And this is where everything changed. I think one of my great teachers is a beautiful uh, brother called Peter Sanders, uh, or Abdul Azim Sanders. He came to Islam in the late 60s and has been a photographer of the Muslim world for the last 55 years. Um, but he started doing photography for uh, in London in the 60s, so Jimi Hendrix, you know, The Who, all these, mm -hmm. you know, rock and roll names, and then goes to Morocco, has an opening, meets a range of amazing people, and then has spent 55 years or more now capturing great, you know, saints, sages, people of, you know, knowledge. It was living proof that his crazy dream was actually possible to be an incredible artist and still live out your faith. It was all he needed to run in pursuit of his vision. Yeah, and he, he has a great story when he took this photo. You know, he only had a couple of shots left on that reel. The first one didn't quite work. And I think this was the last one on the reel. This is all film, right? Pre-digital. And they, uh, they worked out, they took a ruler to it and when they, you know, enlarged it, and it follows the exact golden ratio, like the, wow. you know, to the millimeter. The composition is The composition perfect. and subhanAllah, what a gift. With his newfound learnings on board, Peter was ready to re-enter the world of design. Only this time, he was taking his religion with him. That same year, alhamdulillah, a lot of incredible projects started to open up. And particularly as I traveled a little further, I got to the different Muslim communities, particularly in uh, California. Um, and, and UK, for example, beautiful, great projects came up. I felt very aligned in the heart. He soon became the go-to designer, garnering the attention of high-profile clients and major companies. This is an example of you know being able to work with very inspiring people mm -hmm. and trying to do something aligned with the heart. But if anything made Peter stand out, it was his personal wild ideas as a creative visionary, like these Quran Google glasses, which, by the way, was way before these. Apple uh, ProVision things. He began using his passion for design skills to cater to Muslims around the world. Created this brand um, and created these stories and characters around that. So that's definitely one of my favorites. So forget Barbie. We've got uh, <laughs> Salam Sisters, Tarada yeah. and they all have names. Yes. Ka Karima. That's right. That's right. Young so girls would love that. I'm sure if you're a parent of young daughters. His love for Islam shaped his design work tremendously. And what he once thought would be a major impediment turned out to be a giant source of blessing. So one, another one that's quite, I am really uh, excited by, is called Tales of Khayal. But that's using comics and video games to mm. invite people to explore these kind of spiritual concepts and imagination in particular. They're wearing hijabs as well, guys. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Some of the characters have that. Check that that's out. That's Alifa. Alifa. Okay. Um, but we, we're kind of exploring in this series, what does the future look like? So in you know, Istanbul in the future, Check that out. there might be a digital realm. You've got the Aya Sofia. <laughs> in the world of Khayyal. His success was clear proof of the power of relying on Allah. As Allah says in the Quran, You fear Allah, Allah will open for you a way. From, from places you could possibly never imagine. And, and you have a living testament to that verse in the Quran, subhanAllah. But perhaps the culmination of his life's work was in being invited to Silicon Valley to teach major companies about Islam and the Muslims' approach to design. So you actually gave an Islamic-inspired talk in yeah. Google? Yeah, wow. so I was able to, and, and Apple as well, Humble and a few others. And Apple, just, where, just, just only Apple. <laughs> so what I've been trying to do with some of the, the work and the, you know, sharing the, the knowledge from the Islamic understanding of mm -hmm. design is how do you contemporize that in a language that people are open to and they understand. Mm -hmm. But for, for most attendees, it's the first time they're hearing these words or learning about what is, what's a baraka in design? SubhanAllah. So and you're saying someone who potentially designed the iPhone 15 learned the word baraka from you? <laughs> Maybe that, may, look. Peter had come full circle from initially having to walk away from design because of his faith to excelling in design, all thanks 
to his faith. You initially opened the conversation by saying that you met a Muslim family that was successful, that was modern and still holding on to their faith. And you've literally become that same embodiment right now. Someone who's successful, someone who's creative, held on to their faith. Alhamdulillah, I've got to be mindful that I've got so much work to do on myself. I didn't consciously want to come out and make myself a professional Muslim. I'd rather be a professional who is Muslim, right? And in that way, have an impact on, on people through my work or over time, you know, community types of projects. It's not like I'm, oh, I've reached this, this state. I mean, certainly over time, you know, things it change. Takes time. But your internal state, internal work, that is ongoing for life. Of you know, course. that tazkiyah, that purification of, of your heart, that is, I've got a lot of work to do there. He has come to be an embodiment of what it means to hold on to your faith while striving to be successful. You know, if someone asks me, you know, what is success? Success, well, it might feel like living in a state of sakina, And that doesn't mean having more. It doesn't mean feeling better than or judging or, you know, it, it feels your inner state of contentment. You're in this state of rida, of, of contentment and surrender in a, you know, a grateful, peaceful way. And to me, that's kind of the definition of Islam, you know. May Allah bless our brother Peter, a creative visionary, and allow his story to inspire Muslims around the world. Ameen.